Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video I'm not going to talk about OpenStreetMap, but rather I'm going to show you some resources, some online resources for historical maps so you can use them for your research or just for your curiosity. And without further ado, let's jump in. The first map is geohive.ie, so it's map.geohive.ie slash mapviewer.html. But of course, I will put all the links in the description, so you don't have your to have your notepad out now. And it has it shows a map of Ireland, of course, and it has a search bar where you can search for addresses, air codes, layers, and coordinates. And I have never used any of the last three. I only type in the place name, or if it's a certain building like a castle, I put in castle the castle name. And that usually finds it. Uh, this map is provided by Ordnance Survey Ireland. I'm going to show you my car key in County Tipperary because that is hopefully going to be the first place I'm going to go when lockdown ends is over. Because it has a Cantwell's Castle and I've seen the one in Kilfane and the one in Sanford's Court and just to complete the Trinity I will go there hopefully. And if you, when you click on the search result, it'll jump to the map and you can close all the windows. And you see it's a village and it has a graveyard and a bunch of buildings that you can't really tell what they are yet. Maybe you can say that the cruciform one is a church. And on the left hand side, you have all the maps. You have aerial maps and the historical maps. There are four historical maps the oldest are the historic map 6 inch black and white and 6 inch color. They're both uh, made in the same years. And the next one then is the 25 inch map, which is uh, has more detail and was finished in 1913. And the last one, which doesn't have a date on it, uh, it's sometime after 1900. Based on the first edition, of course, because um, they're all 6 inch. And it does have railways, which doesn't help a lot with dating it, but it has buildings on it that aren't on, that were built after 1900, like the Carnegie Library in Kilkenny. I'm not sure if it is the, the 1940s one. They look similar. And first I'm going to choose the six inch color one. So you just uh, tick the little box and then it loads. And you see the lovely historic map on top of the the other one. And you have a slider where you can change the transparency. So you can slide it all the way to the left, which makes it invisible, makes that layer invisible. And you can drag it all the way to the right, which uh, makes the base layer invisible. So if you're looking at a certain building and you want to see if the outline changed at all, for example, that's very handy. So on the old map you see there's a Roman Catholic chapel, a church in ruins in a graveyard and another Roman Catholic chapel in ruins. And in the east you have Mycarchy Castle with a lovely walled garden. So you see the footpaths and some flower beds there. And you can disable that layer or delete it from your selection. I'm just going to disable it so I can switch in between. Uh, you can zoom in any further than what I've shown you there because the 6 inch is just the resolution, so to speak, is not as good as other ones. Next, we're going to go to the 25 inch map, which has more detail, of course, because the scale is different. And uh, you see the Roman Catholic Chapel now has a name, uh, St. Peter's Roman Catholic Chapel. The number underneath is the acreage of the field. It's got nothing to do with the chapel. And you see the other church ruin, which is indicated as a ruin, not just by saying church ruin or in ruins, but also it's not shaded like uh, on the six inch map, but rather it's just basically like hollow walls. 
and it doesn't have a roof so it's not shaded that's how they indicate ruins and you have the castle and you see the walled garden is gone like there's no flower beds or footpath or anything in it left um it's probably just used for as a field or who knows and the other Roman Catholic chapel that was on the older map is completely gone. There's no indication even of the site. But you have railway lines now, which you didn't have before. And um, you get the some of the pumps are on it. Maybe all of them, I, was, I can't check. Um, this one is written out as pump. Uh, sometimes when it's within a farmyard and there's not enough room, to write the whole word, it's just gonna be P. It would be nice to have a key somewhere because sometimes like the DW you see next to the castle, I have no idea what that means. Um, you can also look at the aerial photography. So I'm gonna choose the one that looks to be the latest 2012. Um, and because the transparency is a bit um, high, um, it's a bit blurry, but if I slide it over, you can see it clearer. So the, you see the walled garden is gone. There's nothing to indicate uh, any use of a garden. You can, it's probably wall still there. You see the castle ruin. The chapel is still in use, so it has a roof on it. The other church ruin is still a ruin. You can see that there. And um, a wall around the graveyard. And there's no indication of where the other chapel was. It might be in the shade of those trees there, but you can't see really any um, crop marks or anything like that. And the six inch Cassini then, which is the most recent, has a pump house there. And you can see that on the aerial imagery as well. So that's still there. And it also has the castle in ruins and the name of the Catholic Church. And the fonts are also a bit changed. And for example, I use this to look for benchmarks, which I don't copy into OpenStreetMap. I go to the place and check if they're still there. And only then I add them to OpenStreetMap. Um, just looking if there are any around my car key. Not in the village. There's one there in the middle of a field on the map so it's probably gone because it might have been part of um, like a wall in the field or some stone of some sort they're usually gone also not really accessible for me to walk through all the fields let's see there is another one down the road 350.9 so you have the crow's foot symbol that's for benchmark and the way it faces is the way it kind of the way the foot opens, so to speak, is where it faces. And then you have BM for benchmark and the height above sea level in feet. Let's see, uh, there's a lime kiln as well. Sometimes that's abbreviated as LK. If there isn't enough room on the map, um, there's another benchmark there on that crossroads. Maybe I'll get a chance to see if it's still there. But even the crossroads, they have been widened since 1913 so that might be gone the second map is archaeology.ie which is provided by the heritage council whereas the one before geohive is provided by ordnance survey ireland and needless to say you can't copy any of the information you find on either of these maps into openstreetmap so they have two types of dots Red dots and blue dots. The red dots are basically archaeological and the blue dots are the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage, NIAH for short. And uh, if you scroll down, you see that it's released under Creative Commons Attribution. And you just click Accept Conditions and Continue after you've read them. And again, you get a map of Ireland what else and i type in kilkiran for a change the one in kilkenny there are two at least in kilkenny i hope it'll bring me to the right one there's probably way more than those four in the whole of ireland so 
So I click on the result and it jumps to the map. I can't really say yet if this is the Kyokuren I'm looking for. But there's Karagin and Kramer's Grove. Yeah, that looks good. Because there aren't a lot of features you can see on and at that zoom level. Um, so you see we have one blue dot there and a couple of red ones. And the blue one is the bridge over the unnamed stream, what is called Kikirin Bridge. And that's the road to Ballyfoil. And the other one leads to, uh, I'm not sure, it's uphill, I haven't cycled far on that, but it also leads to Ballyfoil if you turn left there. And the one there is to Kilkenny. And this area is called Kilkirin Cross, even though it's not a cross, and I don't think it has ever been a cross. It was more crossy in past times, but it's not anymore. And if you zoom in, you see uh, the buildings, and this one is the old Kilkirin graveyard, which is completely gone. It was even almost gone um, during Canon Kerrigan's time, and you see he describes it. Um, stood on the roadside to the left as one goes from Carrigine to Sandford's Court. It was destroyed long ago and not a trace now remains, and that's in 1905. But it was relevant uh, for those people in the bungalows left and right when they wanted to build. And it is on the left of that road, but I'll show you that the road was actually in a different place. I, where I'm wiggling around there, that's I think where it used to be. And there's a quarry there and a, an old water mill, supposedly. And the blue dot, as I said, is a bridge. And sometimes they come with pictures, those entries. And this one is obviously the wrong picture. This happens sometimes on this map. So on the top right, you have a couple of buttons you can press. One is a filter where you can look for, let's say, churches or ring forts or... Um, maybe even something like Georgian architecture, I'm not sure. That's too modern for me, Georgian, no. But if you click on that window type of a button, you will see that it opens a base map gallery and you have the Ordnance Survey Ireland map, which is the, which I'm not going to click, and the aer an aerial map, which is Esri. It's okay. It's not the... Probably not the latest imagery. It doesn't give a date there. And you see the lovely ring fort or hill fort. Jury is still out. But you see there's no graveyard where the dot is. No trace remains. And there's digital globe is another very clear um, satellite view. Also Esri. No graveyard. Um, the quarry you can't see. You can see remains of the other quarry in that corner. And there's nothing left of the nothing left of the mill either. Like if I've cycled that road a couple of times, there's there's nothing. The stream is still there. Comes down from Johnswell somewhere. There's a little bridge and it goes around there. There's actually a little a pond or something. That corner where the hedge meets the street. But we're interested in the historic maps and it's the same ones that we had on GeoHide only with the added function of having those um, dots there and additional information. So you see the road from Kilkiran Cross to let's say to the where the mill was isn't there. There's no road at all. But that's probably what they used the quarry for to build the road. Um, the road to Valley Fall, of course, is there. And that connection was built later on. So you see how the the road comes down from Carrageen towards Sanford's Court. And left of that is where the church used to be. Just um, try to remember the the line of that road. Because if we look at the satellite view, try to remember where it is, because there is no transparency um, slider. You see that for the first bit it followed the hedge and then went straight through. 
the field, um, but there's nothing there too. Again, I've, I've looked, can't see anything. You can see the hedge, but can't see any trace of the road. But it's gone 150 years, I guess. And if we look at the 25 inch map, you see that, again, the road is already gone in that one. So let's say it's gone 100 years, at least. And you have the new road. And it's still left, um, the Kukiran church is still left of the road from Carrigeen to Sanford's Court, even though I maybe not, I wouldn't say that's the road from Carrigeen. And you see the quarry there, and there also used to be a lime kiln. I don't know the name of that field. I haven't heard back from the farmers. I know that the one there, south of Kilkiran Cross, is called the Blue Field. I don't know the reason. And the one with the well is called the Well Field. That's kind of obvious. And you see there's FP, that's footpath, probably, leading down from through the quarry. And the six inch Cassini, you still get the site of the church, you still have the footpath leading into the two quarries. Um, there is a gate still at the cross. Um, that benchmark is gone. That gate is still there, there's not really a footpath and there is, I'm pretty sure there isn't one coming down. Um, there are some benchmarks still around as I said 25 inch map is most precise so you have one there that's gone because the gate posts are gone I think that's where the the milk churns used to be that part and there is one uh, there's a little stream and a bridge and the bridge is still there and the benchmark is on it I've cleaned it the bridge and a friend of mine painted the benchmark so it's more visible and I thought there was one on that bridge, but I remember that wrong. And there's a lot more to explore in that area. It's great for 5k walks. And the third provider is UCD, which have, has a huge map collection. They're all, of course, Ordnance Survey maps. But they put them online and you can see they use OpenStreetMap as the base map, hooray, but they don't attribute it properly, we're on it. Whereas the other two providers were good for rural and urban surroundings, this one is really only good for towns and cities. And even the bigger the city, the more material you get. Um, I'll show you with a comparison between Tipperary and Dublin. So I'm going to go into Clonmel because I've used those maps before to look for benchmarks, of course. What else? And uh, it looks like there are two layers. Um, not quite sure. So you see um, what area of Clonmel is covered because all the estates wouldn't have been there historically. There would have all been fields or even forest, who knows. Um, so the green color you see on the right hand side, there's a key to all the colors, but it's uh, impossible really to say which dark green this is, 1883, 1874 or 1864. But I don't know how to do it better, so I won't complain too much. Um, you also can search for a place, but I've already zoomed in. Because if there are only towns and cities, you usually know what they are, you don't really have to use the search function. And you get um, five layers, but it's a bit misleading. You see there are not actually five layers uh, of Clonmel. So I'm just going to disable them to see which one it is. So it's not that uh, time frame. It's not that time frame. It is that time frame. So it's in between 1871 and 1879. And you can see there's only that one layer for Clonmel. It's better than nothing. 
So I'm just gonna click on one of the tiles and whereas the other two uh, providers were slippy maps, that means you can zoom in and out. Um, this one isn't, it's just images. They just scanned all the sheets of the Ordnance Survey maps. So you click on view map image to open it. And it opens it in the same window. Not good. Um, I should have clicked uh, open link in new tab or new window. And it loads the image. And you see there's not much going on because it's one of the corner sheets. Uh, you have the railway line and it's in color. You get the railway station, uh, quite a few trees and some information at the bottom, the scale. So the railway station in Clonmel I don't think I've been there. I keep com confusing Clonmel and Carrick on shore. I'm very sorry. They're just very similar towns. So there seems to be one on the railway bridge. And um, no, I, I, I remember now I haven't been at the railway station, not on that side where the benchmark is anyway. So as I said, not a lot going on. There is a lot of buildings um, all over the place now, but um, not in 1774, I think, 1874, excuse me, 1874. So I have to go back because I forgot that I have to open it, to actively open it in a new tab. I have to zoom in again. I remember that next time. So I'm gonna use um, a tile that, or a sheet that is more in the center. Uh, I really like St. Mary's Graveyard, oh, it's like my favorite place in Clonmel. So I'm gonna try to choose a tile there. Problem is that it's exactly quartered. Um, so this time um, I clicked open a new tab. So it's easier to go back to the overview map. And you see there's a bit more going on and it's in black and white for some reason. 1874 and we have Irish town there and the southwestern part of St. Mary's graveyard a lot of trees and the city wall or town wall sorry town wall and and that's still there very impressive uh, it reminded me a bit of um, Chester or York and then lovely Anne Street. It's a beautiful street if you haven't been. Um, it's a lovely Georgian street. It's just crying out to have uh, movies shot in it. And then the Methodist graveyard, which is still there. And the benchmark is also still there at the entrance. And, the, and that benchmark is also still there. And the Methodist church, can't remember. That benchmark still there and the potato market and you see how the ruins are indicated again they're just not shaded in and it also says ruin and that's um that gate uh i can't remember is it maybe the north gate it's called the north gate in carrick on shore and there are more ruins there there's a lot of, quite a bit of detail and even the constabulary barracks, you see all the rooms indicated. And you see a lot of different trees as well. Um, they probably even indicated the species by the shape, I'm not sure, but because they look different. It looks like some are needle trees and some are deciduous. And you see uh, a pump there what you could call one of those village pumps. I don't know what LP is, something point. They look, seems to be, um, I don't know if that's fences going out there or sidewalks. 
there's a lot of detail anyway. And a bit for sure. And I'm gonna go leave Clonmel. Of course, OpenStreetMap mapped Clonmel uh, last August for Heritage Week. That's why there are so many buildings and historical sites mapped. And I'm gonna go to Dublin just to show you um, what it looks like when there are several layers. I'm just gonna use the search function, which doesn't seem to work very fast. So I'm just gonna drag the map to Dublin. And you can already see all the different colors. Um, I'm not super familiar with the history of Dublin, but I guess um, like in Berlin, some of the parts used to be independent villages or towns and then they were included into Dublin and um, they might have had their own surveys done like a, a sandy mount survey and a, uh, I don't know I'm not super familiar with Dublin but you see all kinds of colors and they, the tiles or the sheets overlap as well because the surveys weren't always done in the same way just gonna uh, look at Kilmainham and you can see there are at least two layers there and it's still searching for Dublin I just turned those off to find the jail and the courthouse easier Here we are. So there is a layer for the earliest map, so 1847. Open in a new tab and have a look what they surveyed there. So this one's black and white again. There's uh, a lot of detail. So you see, even in the jail, you have every single cell indicated. Great for a jailbreak. The courthouse also seemed to have several rooms and a lot of trees behind the courthouse. Look, even every window, every door, everything is there. It's a great resource. Uh, let's look at another year see what's available 1864 so that's almost 20 years later and they're still paying a lot of attention to the vegetation and again a lot of detail on the the jail and the courthouse and you can see there is a benchmark there now, which is still there. It's sandstone, so it's a bit corroded, but it's still there. And let's look at another year. The most recent, probably the 25 inch, we'll see. No, 1889. So another uh, 20 years on, 22 years. And you see you can also share the images, there is a share button. So you see the, um, it shows a different part of the map, so to speak. So the before the jail was more in the center of the sheet and now it's further up. And there's less detail now, you don't see all this se the separate rooms are in cells and same with the courthouse still a lot of vegetation around the benchmark still indicated sometimes it's interesting to compare the height above sea level on the different maps sorry for rambling on about benchmarks oh that's what i use the maps for and it even has a letterbox there can you see that pillar letterbox can't remember if that's still there. That's another very interesting topic. Post boxes. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, 
exploring you can do with all these maps and like time travel if if you pick a certain building if you are lucky enough that your family has been in the same building for quite a while then um, you can look at the surroundings or just yeah just explore through the 100 180 years um, of the maps it's mostly it's, it's easiest in Dublin um, because it has most of the maps but even uh, if you combine this website with the other two or one of the other two it should give you enough to compare in between and do a bit of time travel I hope you found that interesting and if you know of any other online resources for Irish historical maps, please leave them in the comments below. Bye!